In this video, we're going to look at the concept of slope and do a number of examples. Slope measures a change in one variable from a one unit change in another variable. Important slope concepts in economics include marginal revenue, marginal benefit, marginal cost, marginal utility, marginal product of labor, marginal profit. These are all slope concepts. So for example, marginal revenue, it's the change in revenue from producing one more unit of output. Marginal utility, the change in utility from consuming one more unit of a good. Marginal cost, the change in cost from producing one more unit of a good, and so on. So here we have a, a general linear functional form, y equals a plus bx, y is a variable, x is a variable, b is the slope. It will give the change in y from a one unit change in x. So for example, we have this linear equation, y equals 12.5 plus 3x. In this case, b is 3, so the slope is 3, telling us y increases by 3 units for every 1 unit increase in x. Alternatively, it uh, also implies that y would decrease by 3 units for every 1 unit decrease in x. So this holds logically in reverse. Another example, y equals 4 plus 0.2x. Here the slope is 0.2 telling us y increases by 0.2 units for every one unit increase in x. Here, y equals 20 minus, 20 minus 5x. The slope here is negative. It is minus 5, telling us in this case y decreases by 5 units for every one unit increase in x. And if we know that y decreases by 5 units for every 1 unit increase in x, we could then uh, surmise that y would decrease by 10 units for every 2 unit increase in x. And then another example, y equals 33 minus 0.5x. The slope here again is negative. It's minus 1 half or minus 0.5 telling us that y decreases by 0.5 units for every one unit increase in x. If x increased by two units, y would then, um, if x would increase by two units, y would decrease by a full unit. So a uh, slope formula, uh, slope is just change in y over change in x. What is the change in y? It's y subscript one minus y subscript zero change in x can be thought of in similar terms, x subscript 1 minus x subscript 0. So what does it mean? What are these subscripts? So let's do an example. So for example, if x equals 2, y equals 8. And if x equals 5, y equals 20. We can calculate the slope there. So as we go from uh, um, y equal 8 to y equal 20, this is a 12 unit increase. So y subscript 1 is 20. Uh, y subscript 0 is 8, so 20 minus 8 is 12. And in the denominator, x goes from 2 to 5, so uh, 5 here is x subscript 1, 2 is x subscript 0, so this difference here is 3, so the slope between these points is 4. If x increases by 1, y would increase by 4. Uh, likewise, we could reverse these subscripts, it's not going to matter. Uh, we could say the, the y equals 8, the 8 is y subscript 1, and y equals 20, that's y subscript 0. So if we put 8 minus 20 here in the numerator, we have a change of minus 12. And then similarly here, uh, the x equals 2, that's going to represent x subscript 1. And the x equals 5, that will represent x subscript 0. So we get minus 3 still get the same answer. So don't be concerned about which one is subscript 1 or subscript 0. Pick one and just be consistent. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, a derivative um, is a function uh, that gives the slope of the function. So a derivative is a function that gives the slope of the function. Here's a derivative notation. It looks a lot like this uh, algebraic notation up here. So for example, the derivative of total cost is marginal cost. 
uh, the derivative of revenue or total revenue is marginal revenue. The derivative of total product of labor is marginal product of labor. And all of these marginal things are slopes, and a derivative is nothing more than a slope function. So something to keep in the back of your mind. So moving on, we have a couple of uh, curves here, uh, straight lines, uh, this blue one and red one. So line A and line B, each line slopes upwards, so the slope is positive. As X increases, Y increases, so we're dealing with a positive relationship in both cases here for both of these uh, lines. Uh, the variables are moving in the same direction. If X is getting smaller, Y is getting smaller. So let's calculate the slope of line A. We can look at the, the change in Y over the change in X. So Y as we go from, say, the origin to this point here, uh, the change in y is 8 units, 8 minus 0. And the change in x, as we go from 0 to 4, okay, this point up here corresponds to uh, an x value of 4. Uh, so we get 4 minus 0. The slope of this blue line is 2 for every 1 unit increase in x, or in this case, units of labor y or output increases by 2. And the slope of line B, same thing, we'll calculate the change in y over change in x uh, from this point right here. So the change in y, we go from 0 to 2, got a 2 unit increase in y. And as we go from 0 to 4, we have a 4 unit increase in x, change in x is 4. So the slope of this flatter line is 1 half. So steeper lines have a larger slope. Uh, one other thing here, slope does not change along a straight line. Uh, it stays constant. Let's do another example. Um, oops. Let's do another example here. Um, another way of thinking of slope instead of change in y over change in x, sometimes it's just uh, simpler to think of it as rise over run, rise divided by run. So the slope between, say, points B and C, uh, if we were to cal calculate the rise, this is a three-unit rise between points C and B. And if we were to calculate the run, the, the horizontal run, as we go from C to B, we m we're moving over four units. So rise over run here, we get a slope of 3 fourths or 0 0.75. We could also calculate the slope between points A and C. Nothing is going to change. Uh, the slope doesn't change along a straight line. The rise, the vertical rise between A and C is this going from 2 to 8. So that is a 6 unit rise. So we got 6 here in the numerator. And the run as we go from C to A. That is a run of 8 units, so once again, we get the same slope of 0 0.75. And then for good measure, we could calculate the slope between points A and B. Okay, this is a 3-unit increase as we go from um, B to A or A to B. 3-unit increase, and the run here is 4. 4 to 8, that's a 4-unit increase, 4-unit change in X. And so we get the same slope. And as I mentioned before, slope does not change along a straight line. Uh, let's do some other examples with um, some supp supply and demand curves. Let's uh, calculate slope. Uh, again, maybe thinking about it as rise divided by run. And so the slope of the demand curve, um, you can think of it as rise over run or change in P over change in Q. Or our Y variable is P, our X variable is Q. So what I like to do with a demand curve is calculate the slope between these two extreme points. So as we go from 0 to 80, okay, here, um, so we got an 80-unit change, call that minus 80, okay? And as we go from 0 to 40, that's an increase of 40. So we have a slope of minus 2. This is downward sloping line, so it is going to be minus, okay? so. Uh, don't forget, downward sloping lines have a negative slope, so we get a slope of minus 2. If Q increases by 1, 
the price falls by um, two. And then the slope of the supply curve in a similar manner here. Uh, this time, um, we're going to go, say, from this point here at 20 to 60. That is a 40 unit increase. And then from 0 to 10, get this point on the supply curve here. When Q is 10, uh, that's just a 10 unit increase. So the slope of the supply curve is 4. Uh, another example of a concept is slope in economics. The absolute value of slope of the PPF, production possibilities frontier, measures the opportunity cost of producing one more unit of the good measured on the x-axis. So the slope here, uh, as we go from the 1,000 up here to 400, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this rise here, it's a fall, so we're falling by 1,000 units, so minus 1,000. And we're moving over here. Uh, uh, the pounds of paper in this case is increasing by 400. So minus 1,000 divided by 400, we get a slope of minus 2.5. So every pound of paper that we produce, we give up producing 2.5 units of cardboard opportunity cost. And if we were to take the absolute value, it's just 2.5. Okay, moving on. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. Uh, when slope is zero, the function is maximized or minimized at the bottom of the hill. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, so uh, a function, uh, a revenue function, for example, will be maximized when the slope of the revenue function is zero. Uh, average cost uh, function will be minimized, will be at the bottom of the average cost curve when the slope is zero. A vertical line has an undefined slope, and slope will change at every point along a nonlinear function. So just some things to keep in mind about slope. Um, here, when P equals 10, Q equals 20. When P equals 20, Q equals 15. We want to solve for the inverse demand equation. And the inverse demand equation, in general, P equals A plus BQ. So we're going to solve for the slope or B. So the, the change in P here as we go from 10 to 20 is a 10 unit increase. The change in Q as we go from 20 to 15 is a 5 unit decrease. So the slope here is going to be minus 2. So B is minus 2. So P equals A plus BQ, general form. And now we know that uh, B is minus 2. Uh, what is A? Well, we can solve for A uh, by taking one of the, these points here and taking this point where P is 10, I'll plug 10 in for P, and this point where Q is 20, I'll plug 20 in for Q, and we're just going to solve this for A then. So adding 40 to both sides, A equals 50, and we have our inverse demand equation, price equals 50 minus 2Q. Let's do a few other applications. If total cost is given by 150 plus 4Q, what is marginal cost? Okay, this is just a, in general linear functional form here. The slope is going to be that B parameter. In this case, marginal cost will be 4. Every time we produce one more unit of output, total cost increases by four, $4. If the total product of labor is given by Q equals 12L, what is the marginal product of labor? Again, this is in just general linear functional form where the slope is going to be the, the parameter on the, the variable here of L. So marginal product is 12. Every time we hire one more worker, output goes up by 12 units. And another example of total revenue is given by 15.5Q. What is marginal revenue? Again, this is just in general slope form. Uh, the, the A term here is zero, so there's no uh, um, the, the vertical intercept here just occurs at the origin, in other words. So the slope here, or marginal revenue, is 15.5. Every time we produce one more unit, total revenue goes up by 15.5, $15.50.
Oh, I'm sorry, one more example. If the total benefit of consumption is given by TB equals 150 plus 3Q, what is the marginal benefit of consumption? So marginal benefit will just be the change in total benefit over the change in consumption, or Q, and that is just uh, the, the B parameter here, which is 3. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.